I formally welcome you to the second screencast of chapter number three. In the last screencast, we talked about what is ASMD and how to approach a digital design using ASMD technique. We also started traffic light controller example, which we are going to conclude in this second screencast. So if you could recall from the first screencast, we said that any SMD based design is based on four basic steps. The design specification, where we specify the design with its IO indicated clearly in terms of direction and fit. The design partitioning, where you split this design into two further sub blocks, control unit and data path. Control unit defines the sequence of operation while the data path executes the actual executional logic. All inputs are applied to the control unit while all outputs are taken from the data path. This procedure is completed by the design of data path and design of control unit and its ASMD. To understand these fundamental principles, we started with the traffic light controller having four boulevard, having each having green and red signals. The traffic lights are open in a clockwise direction from west to south, each for five seconds, and remain closed for 15 seconds. To approach this design using SMD based technique, we started with step one, that is design specification. We drew a box of traffic light controller with its two inputs reset and clock, and four outputs each for one boulevard, having two bits. This two bit is one zero for red and zero one for green. As a second step, we did divine, design partitioning, we, divide, we divided this traffic light controller into control unit and data path. We applied two inputs, that is reset and clock to the control unit, while we took four outputs from the data path, each for one boulevard. I, I recall you that each of the output is two bit, one zero for the red and zero one for the green. As the third step, we are going to design this data path. To design any data path, you need four further steps. As a first step, you have to brainstorm the functionality of the design. And then as a second step, you have to enlist all combinational and sequential components required to implement the functionality of step number one. For example, in the case of traffic light controller, we are going to implement this data path. And we said, to figure out the functionality of the data path, we have to read design specification between the line. For example, in this case, we are required to open and close traffic light signal for a certain amount of time. Counting of five seconds require a counter. So the, the sequential element required for this data path is a counter. As a second case, we need a multiplexer to select between a red and green signal from west to north. So in this case, we need four multiplexer, each one for one boulevard. So if I go back to four steps for design of data path, the third step is to draw a block diagram for each component. So if I show you this design, we need a multiplexer to select between red and green and we need a three bit counter to count for five seconds. Now we are going to draw a clear block diagram representing these combinational and sequential elements. To represent the combinational element, we are going to use multiplexer. A red input is applied as a first input while the green input is applied as the second input. Remember the red input was two while the green input was one. This control signal is going to control between the red and green signal and route it to the output. This sequential counter is going to count from zero to five and is going to raise a flag at the count of each five. As a final step, we are going to stitch all these components in the data pass together. So for example, here you could see that we have four multiplexer for each boulevard. Each multiplexer is selecting between a red and green signal. Each multiplexer is controlled by its selection signal. So for example, 
if you want to get a green signal on east, we are going to select one on a DP select east so that this one goes to the output. While in all other signals, we are going to select zero so that the red goes to the output in each of the boulevard. This counter is going to count for five and it's going to raise this count flat. If you re could recall the last step, that's the design of ASMD, we said that the design of ASMD or control unit is based on these control signals and this flag. So now let's perform the last step, that is design of the control unit. So this is the overall design. So here you could see that we have a control unit and the data path connected together. We have figured out four control signals, each to control one multiplexer inside the data path. And there is one flag raised by the counter once a count of five is completed. Based on these five control signals and flag, we are going to design the ASMD in the control unit. So let's start with how to design an ASMD in the control unit. First, we have to define a state. State is defined as collection of signals which are performing the similar job. For example, if you see this data path, what can be possible similar job? For example, opening the East Boulevard is a similar job. Similarly, opening West is a similar job. Opening a North is a similar job. Opening a South is a similar job. So the, the signals for all these similar jobs would be known as state. We're going to define a box for each state. So you could see that we have a box of, with state name on it and different control signals contained inside the state box. A state can cross it from one state to another state. This transition can be conditional or unconditional. In case of conditional transitions, we are going to place a decision box between two states. This triangular box is going to define that if this condition is true, the state is going to transit from state one to state two, while if it's false, it is going to retain the same state. So this ASMD is at the core of a control unit design. So the next question is, how we could know how many states are there in the design. So to know that, we have to count and guess how many possible states can be there. For example, in this particular design, we need one state for reset and four states required to control each boulevard. Then we are going to name each state. For example, in this case, we are going to name our state as S reset, S west, S north, S south, and S east. So after doing this, we could define the basic skeleton of the control unit. So you could see that we have reset, west, north, and so on. Once you know this skeleton, you have to find those conditional transitions or unconditional transitions in your ASMD. If they're conditional, Transitions, you also have to define different conditions which are governing this transition. For example, you could see that the transition between reset and west is unconditional. There is no condition in between. But the transition between west and north requires the counter flag to be raised. That is after five seconds. The same logic goes for the other transitions that is from west to north north to south, and so on. So let's write down a complete ASMD for this control unit. So you could see that the design after the reset button is pressed goes into S reset. Unconditionally, it draws it from S reset to S west. The transition from S west to S north 
requires a raising or assertion of a count flag that is five seconds. The transition from north to east also requires the similar flag and the same goes for east to south and then back from south to west. Now let's see what are different control signals during each state transition. So in the case of reset, all of the control signals for each multiplexer goes to zero. That is, that all multiplexers are sending red to the output. Once we go into the west state, only select west goes to one and select south goes to zero. You can notice that we have not played with north and east signals since they were zero in the reset state. We only asserted west signal and deasserted south signal since it would be coming from the south and south will be asserted here. So when it comes from south back to west, we need to deassert the select south signal. On a similar logic, when there is a transition from west to north on the assertion of count flag, we are raising select north to one to enable green signal in the north state and we are resetting select west back to zero so that the effect of select west to one in the west state is cancelled. The similar logic is applied to green and south. So this is a complete SMD partitioning view. We could see that we have control unit and data path. In some designs, you would see an optional storage element. This storage element can be RAM or ROM. There would be data transaction between the storage element and the data path, while this storage element will still be controlled by the control unit. Now let's see how to code this data path. Now coding this data path is pretty rudimentary. For example, if you see the entire view of the data path, you find that we need to write a code of simple two cross one multiplexer and you need to instantiate it four times. And finally, you have to write a code of a three bit counter. And then you have to stitch all of them together in the main module that is the data path. Now let's see how to write a code for a control unit. Writing a code for control unit requires some basic principles. First, you need to define constant for all states. For example, let's consider an example where we have four states. So the state variable is going to be two bit for the four states. So let those states be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and so on. The second step would be to define a state register based on the size of C log to N bits. For four state, this is going to be C log to four, which is two. So you require a register, which is a two bit register. You could name it anything, but let's name it state reg. As a third step, you need an always block for state transition. So you could see the always block for state transition and it would be driven by positive wedge of a clock. So at each positive wedge of a clock, we would look for a state transition. If the state transition is unconditional, then it would be simply from one state to another. If it is conditional, we need to put an if condition to check if the condition is satisfied or not. As a second always block, we need signal assignment. So this second block would be triggered by the state register change. So each time the state transition always block makes some state transition, this will trigger the second always block. It is going to switch all the states and it is going to do the signal application for a certain given condition or a certain given state. Thank you so very much for listening to the screencast on chapter number three. If you have any comments and questions, please leave them below.